the National Broadcasting Company continues its coverage of these important but so far unconfirmed reports from overseas with Robert St. John speaking from the NBC newsroom in New York. Here is one bulletin from London which we can all believe. Londoners were awakened in the early hours of this morning by the roar of planes. Londoners and the people on the coast of England saw the largest force of bombers and fighters ever to take the air. Fighters and bombers sailing away across the channel. The Allies have been planning invasions since soon after the British routed Dunkirk four years ago. The Tehran conference with President Roosevelt, Mr. Churchill, and Premier Stalin also declared that the Allies would launch an invasion from the West. The Germans have picked two ace commanders, Field Marshals von Rundstedt and Field Marshal Rommel, to face the threatened Allied tide in the West. Now, just to summarize, three German news agencies in the early hours of this morning flashed word to the world that an Allied invasion of Western France had begun. But it had begun with Allied parachute troops spilling out of the skies just about dawn over the Normandy coast. The Germans also claim that seaborne forces landed in the La Havre area. They also said that Allied warships were furiously bombarding the big German-held French port of La Havre, which is just 100 miles west of Paris. And just a little while ago, London Radio broadcast urgent instructions to the people of Holland. These instructions told the people of Holland, living within 18 miles of the coast, to leave their homes immediately and to keep off the roads, railroads, and bridges. Let me repeat that there is, as yet, no allied confirmation of any of these Berlin reports. This is the NBC Newsroom in New York. London Radio has just issued a warning from the Supreme Allied Commander advising the French people to leave the entire coastline of France. And here's another bulletin, also from London, which says, The German military commentator, Captain Ludwig Sartorius, made the first comment on the reported invasion today. He said, The great contest between the Reich and the Anglo-Americans has begun which incidentally are not confirmed by the Allies, reports that German warships are fighting Allied landing ships around the Seine estuary just 80 miles from the South England coast and that Allied paratroopers are being landed in France. That bulletin comes from the United Press. This is Robert St. John in the NBC newsroom in New York. Ladies and gentlemen, we may be approaching a fateful hour. All night long, bulletins have been pouring in from Berlin claiming that D-Day is here, claiming that the invasion of Western Europe has begun. Uh, let me read you several of the latest bulletins. One says that a report, unconfirmed by Allied sources, of course, says that heavy fighting is taking place between the Germans and invasion forces on the Normandy Peninsula, about 31 miles southwest of La Havre. Another bulletin, also from Berlin Radio and unconfirmed, says the British-American landing operations against the western coast of Europe, from the sea and from the air, are stretching over the entire area between Cherbourg and La Havre, a distance of about 60 miles. I repeat, there is no confirmation. And here's another bulletin just in. DNB, the German agency says, uh, this is unconfirmed, that the most important airdromes in the area of the Normandy Peninsula of France have been wiped out. Now, I presume that means wiped out by the Allies. Uh, as you may have heard on earlier broadcasts, all three German news agencies have begun broadcasting uh, these stories that the invasion is here. But there is no Allied confirmation as yet. The first report came out shortly after midnight, and since then we've been flooded with reports from Berlin. Paris Radio, strangely enough, has not confirmed any of these reports. Uh, and now we have just been informed that we can expect, in a very few seconds, in a very few seconds, a very important broadcast from the British capital. And so now we take you to London. The text of communique number one will be released to the press and radio of the United Nations in ten seconds. Repeat, ten seconds from now. Under the command of General...
Eisenhower, Allied naval forces, supported by strong air forces, began landing Allied armies this morning on the northern coast of France. This ends the reading of communique number one from Supreme Headquarters, Allied Expeditionary Force. Ladies and gentlemen, this is New York, NBC Newsroom again. Men and women of the United States, this is a momentous hour in world history. This is the invasion of Hitler's Europe, the zero hour of the Second Front. The men of General Dwight Eisenhower are leaving their landing barges, fighting their way up the beaches into the fortress of Nazi Europe. They are moving in from the sea to attack the enemy under a mammoth cloud of fighter planes, under a ceiling of screaming shells from Allied warships. The first news flashes do not say, but a large proportion of this assault is believed to be in the hands of American men. They are making the attack side by side with the British Tommies who were bombed and blasted out of Europe at Dunkirk. Now, at this hour, they are bombing and blasting their way back again. This is the European front, once again being established in fire and blood, not only by the Americans and British, but by many allies in the fight against Axis aggression. This is the supreme test of allied spirit and of allied weapons. The world's greatest military undertaking is underway. Casualties in this mammoth operation, in the subsequent drive inland, may reach a dreadful toll. The German war machine is still powerful and is still strongly entrenched. Our invasion forces are on the offensive, against Nazi troops who have been ordered to die rather than retreat. However, die or retreat they must, for this attack up the shores of Europe is being made with all the strength the Allied command can throw into battle. Eisenhower, the commander, has promised that his men will bring victory in Europe in 1944. The first aim of the Americans and the British will be to secure their beachheads and then the capture or building of airfields so that our planes from European bases can carry on the task of blasting loose the enemy from his prepared positions farther back. That task now is assigned to our planes flying out of England right now. And you have already heard the flash that came from London. The flash, the official Allied announcement that the invasion of Western Europe has begun that D-Day is here, that H-Hour has struck. Air power paved the way for this mighty assault in the West. Nazi targets have been hammered day and night in an offensive which has steadily grown in destructive violence. Thousands of planes each day have flown cross-channel up from Italy and Africa to tear up German gun emplacements which have been four years in the making. Airfields have been knocked out of operation, and the German Air Force, with its wings very badly clipped, has been based farther and farther inland, closer and closer to the German homeland itself. These Allied air blows were methodically driven home to prepare the way for amphibious assault. The German news agency, DNB, has just said in a broadcast that Anglo-American troops were reinforced at dawn at the mouth of the River Seine in the Le Havre area. And here's another one. German radio says that fierce fighting between Nazis and Allied forces is taking place 10 miles inland from the Normandy coast, 10 miles inland. Allied progress has been rapid so far. Already, apparently, our forces have pierced Allied defenses to a depth of 10 miles. And now back to London. And now, ladies and gentlemen, for a special broadcast, we take you to London, England. Ten seconds. Stand by. Eight seconds. Five seconds. Stand by. Three, two... Good morning, everybody. We have just had the first communique from General Eisenhower's headquarters on the invasion. Here is its text. Under the command of General Eisenhower, Allied naval forces, supported by strong air forces, began landing Allied armies this morning on the northern coast of France. And we have also had the first order of the day, 
the one issued by General Eisenhower, wishing Godspeed to his troops as they left the shores of Britain for the shores of northern France. He told them that they were about to embark on the great crusade. He reminded them that the eyes of the world are upon them, that the hopes and prayers of liberty-loving people everywhere in the world are with you. He warned them that the task which they confront is not easy, that the enemy will fight savagely. And he urged upon them devotion to duty, perseverance in the task, and asked the blessing of God upon the great enterprise that the liberty-loving peoples of the world have undertaken this morning. From the NBC newsroom in New York and in Washington, the National Broadcasting Company has brought its listeners a commentary on the German report of Allied landings in France. The commentaries by Robert St. John, Richard Hargness, and Morgan Beatty. The National Broadcasting Company will continue its network service throughout the remainder of the night in view of the important but so far unconfirmed reports from overseas. This is the National Broadcasting Company. Mm -hmm.